little song. Just join in with us wherever you are. We come to this Jesus. But even on that desert aisle, John found a way to get that message out. 
And he got it out to the people, and I'm going to try my best to get it out to you. So he says in verse 1 of 11, there was given me a reed like unto a rock. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and measure them that worship therein. He told him to measure the people. Okay, let's go back to, to 10. And when, if, when we go back to the 10th chapter that we just finished last week, we find out that John was given a book to eat. And when he ate the book, the word of God was just in his stomach. And God gave him a command saying, now I want you to go and preach to the people Israel. Preach to them. Tell my people what I need them to know. Okay, so this chapter 11 is a continuation of that. Where now he's given a read and he's measuring. And uh, God made sure he knew to measure those that worship therein. Measure the people. The scripture verse 2 says, but the court which is without the temple, don't measure this. It is not for the Jews, it is for the Gentiles. And the holy city shall the Gentiles tread underfoot for 40 and two months. Okay? We're going to look at Ezekiel. Because we have learned that a lot of times when you don't understand what you've just read, you find it in one of the other prophets and you can, it, can be, it can be made more clearly to you. So in Ezekiel, 40 chapter and 5th verse, Ezekiel measured in chapters 40, he measured in chapters 41 and 42. Then in chapter 43, God explained to him what he wanted Ezekiel to know. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of of my soles, of the soles of my feet, where I dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. You see, the children of Israel had brought in declamation into the house of God. And God wanted uh, uh, Ezekiel to let them know that I'm not going to tolerate you de destroying my temple any longer. Okay? I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Neither they nor the kings by their whoredoms, see the kings were just full of sin, nor the carcasses of the kings. See, when a king died, they honored him by letting his body lay up in the temple for several days. And God says that, that he was through with that, that was sin. He didn't want to experience that no more. And then in 43, 9 through 10, he said to Ezekiel, now let them put away their whoredom. Tell them to stop sinning. Let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me. And I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thy son of man, show the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. And let them measure the pattern. Okay, so when I saw that, I understood clearly what God was saying in Revelation. He was saying that I want the people of Israel to measure themselves. I want them to look at their own sins and their own iniquities, and I want them to correct their doings. I want them to correct them. If they correct them, I can forgive them, and they can continue to be my people. But if they do not correct their ways, then I am going to send them to punishment. That is what God is meaning when he is telling uh, John to measure the people. Okay? Revelations, going back to Revelations 11 and 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. And these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in that manner by fire from their mouth be killed. These two have power to shut up heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. So when we hear that, we all are clearly understanding that that was Elijah. Remember he shut up heaven that it didn't rain for, for three days and a half? 
James 5 and 17 spoke of it, and he said, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he earnestly prayed that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. So we know that witness is Elias. Well, the other witness, they say, would, God said, would have the power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Well, this makes us to know that this witness was Moses because it was Moses who exercised all these plagues over Egypt when Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. They both departed this life in some strange and amazing ways. Elijah and Elisha walked together and suddenly a chariot of fire came down from heaven and scooped him up. Elisha got his mantle and was awarded double portion of his spirit. He is the only the second known rapture after Enoch who was the seventh from Adam. Revelations 11 through and number 7 says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, they're talking about Moses and Elijah. Now we know that Moses had gone up on, Mount, on the mountain with God to, 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 to be with God, and he did, never came down. And in fact, his body was hidden by God so that Satan would not find him. Satan said in the book of Jude, that he argued with, with the archangel Michael for the body of Moses because he knew that Moses had got out of step with God and anybody who died out of step with God needed to spend that time in, in the belly of the earth on Satan's territory. But Michael didn't argue with him. He just said, the Lord rebuked you. Okay? And when they have finished their testimony, lies and Moses, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. The devil will make war against them and shall overcome them and actually kill them. Verse 8, and their dead bodies shall be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also the Lord was crucified. Now the reason why he is calling the the city Jerusalem, Sodom, and Egypt is because the sin of the people had become so terrible that you couldn't tell them from Sodom. You couldn't tell them the Jerusalem from Sodom. You couldn't tell them from Egypt because the, the, the people had just, sin had just elevated. Now remember that the church had held back the darkness through intercessory prayer. But now the church had been rafted. And now during the thousand years that, that there should be peace for the church, all hell had broken loose on earth. All lawlessness had taken over. Jerusalem looks just like Sodom and Egypt. Lies, deceit, underhandedness, immorality, homosexuality, pedophilia, sex with animals, everything. It was open season for everything after the church was raptured. And now these people are on earth and God has once again given them a chance to be saved. What a mighty God we serve. Revelations 11 and 9 continuing. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see Moses and Elias' dead body three days. And on three days and on half. And shall not allow their dead bodies to be buried. Everybody will see them laying there. Today, through the media of television and handheld devices and iPhones and stuff, this really can be true. When, when this actually happens, people all over the world, from all nations and, and tongues and people and areas, will be able to see it because they'll broadcast it over their devices. It's not hard to believe it. Therefore, for three and a half days, people from all tribes, languages, nations, and tongues will gaze upon the dead bodies of Moses and Elias as they lay in the street. The people got angry at them because after the rapture, they got settled into sin, 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 sin. And here these two are on here saying there's still a chance. If you repent, if you turn your heart to God, there's still a chance that you, even though you missed the rapture, can get in. And they were angry because they didn't want to hear the preaching. Okay? And they that dwell upon the earth, this is verse 11, shall rejoice over them. So they were happy that they were there. And they made merry over them. They, they, had, they gave gifts to each other. They were celebrating the fact that Moses and Elijah, who had preached their sin to them, was now there. They preached 
Turn to God. They preach, give your heart to God. They preach, it's not too late. God in his mercy has given you another chance. Even though you missed the rapture, there is still time. These left behind people did not want to hear the preachers. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God re-entered into them. And they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon all which saw them. Moses and Elias had partaken of the first resurrection. So this death had no power to hold them down. But the ones who had not given their heart to God before time didn't realize that. They couldn't kill it. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And the enemies beheld them. Jesus had not yet ascended. He called Moses and Elias and told them to come on up here. Well, when Peter and the others who were looking on saw them, they got all excited about Moses and Elias and said, let us make three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elias, and one for you. Then the glory of the Lord just overshadowed the place. And when the glory left, they saw Jesus only. And they heard a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Going on, Revelation 11 and 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. You remember when Jesus died, there was a great earthquake and the dead that had died, the old saints rose up. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain 7,000 of those unbelievers who had missed the rapture. 7,000 of them died that day. But there was a remnant and the remnant of the people were afraid and gave God the glory. Now this is after the rapture, y'all. These people have repented and they have given their hearts to God. Now if they can just endure the persecution that's going to come on them, they too can be saved. God still has his hand of mercy extended. It's not too late. Revelation 11, 14, the second woe is past. And behold, the third one coming quicker. Verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Do y'all hear that? God has now taken over all of the kingdoms of the world for his glory. Christ reigns. Isn't that awesome? Verse 16. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell on their faces, and they worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. God reigns, people. Christ reigns. Isaiah 14 and 24. Isaiah saw this. Glory, hallelujah. And he said in the 24th verse, The Lord of hope has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. See, God had always thought that he wanted every person saved. But it was us who rejected him, who would not turn our hearts to Christ. Now right here he said, this has been the plan of God all the time. Thank God that these, this remnant of these people survived. They were not killed, and now they have turned their heart to God. That is a break in the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountain tread him on the foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. The yoke is departing off the people, people, off the people who remained after the rapture. There is still hope, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth. God wants everybody over the whole earth to be saved. Don't, don't wait until Satan has deceived you and blinded your mind so that you can't think. Turn to God now. There is still time. That is the birth that the burden departs from you and the burden be lifted from you. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. All the nations. Not just the Christian nations. But all of the nations, God's hand is stretched out. And he is saying, turn back to me. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Our God is giving them another chance. 
and the nations were angry. And then some of these people got saved. And some of the ones who didn't like this got angry about that. Somebody is mad because God has freed the people. Isn't that a shame? And thy wrath is come. And the time of the, de the dead that they should be judged is here. These people got in just in time. Because now it's time for the dead to be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants and prophets. And to the saints. And them that fear my name. The people who fear his name are about to be rewarded. Small and great. They... And, and that God should destroy them which destroyed the earth. That's what he saw. And now, Revelations 11, 19, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament. How about that? There are people who are actively today out searching for the ark of the covenant. And there it is, in heaven. When the heavens were open, the people saw the ark of God in heaven already. It's not lost. It's in heaven with God. And there was thunder, sounds of power, and lightning, sounds of strength, and voices, sounds of, of strength and, and power, and thundering, and an earthquake, sign of power, and great hail, another sound, sign of the power of our almighty God. Revelations 12, now 1 through 17. Starting at verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And upon her head she had a crown. This woman had some authority. A crown is a symbol of authority. She had the authority of the apostles. Because of the crown itself. And the crown had 12 stars. She had the authority of the children of Israel and the authority of the 12 apostles of God. The sun representing the glory of grace and truth. The moon representing the glory of the law and the prophets. One crown representing the oneness of the 12 apostles. And 12 stars representing the tribes of Israel. And this woman was with child, travailed in birth, and pain to be delivered. The church is ready to come forth built on the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, the law having been our schoolmaster that led us to Christ. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great dragon, red in color, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Heads represent seven different seats of the authority. Seven strong protective covers, defense mechanisms. Those were the horns. Allies, seven different allies. Seven recognized areas of authority. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to deliver, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. By force, this evil demon had taken a third of the sons of God in his tail and snatched them out of heaven and casted them down onto the earth. By force and by deception, he stood over the woman waiting for the birth of her son so that he could destroy the child. And she brought forth a man child, a, a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is chapter 13, chapter 12 of Revelation, and verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. He forced those angels by deception and, and force to fall out of heaven from their, their um, area that God had planted them. Okay, so she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now you know who that is. Who's up there sitting on the throne of God? Jesus. He went back to heaven. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. You remember when Herod was trying to kill all the babies? And, and God told Joseph to take his wife and the child into Egypt and stay there until I tell you Herod was dead? 
Well, she always is going to have a place prepared for her by God. And they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred and three score days. This is the church. A thousand, two hundred and three score days. And she went to her hiding place and, the, and to rest for the period of time after the rapture, 1,260 years. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels fought. See, Michael fought for the one-third of the angels which were snatched in Satan's tail and forced out of heaven and down to earth. Michael fought for them. Satan lost, and he was kicked out of heaven. Verse 8, and Satan prevailed not, neither was their place found for him anymore in heaven. He had to leave heaven. He was a celestial being. He was a being of heaven. But now that he has decided to make himself higher than God, he cannot be in heaven anymore. Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, who accused them before God day and night. You see, Satan was always up there in heaven accusing you of something. Whatever you did now, whatever you did in the past, he was up there trying to get God to be on your case about it. But now God has nipped him in the bud. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. This is after the rapture, y'all. The blood is still working. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto the death. At this point, they had to make up their mind. Even if you kill me, I'm still going to put my hope and keep my hope in Jesus. This is my last opportunity to get in before the gate is closed. So, those remaining on earth were given another way out. Their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The blood still works. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. He's mad now. Because he knoweth that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And the woman was given two wings as a great eagle. And she flew into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time. That equals 1,260 years. From the face of the serpent, that's the same one who deceived her in Eden. Remember, when, when he had her cornered off, he started talking that mess to her and, and lost all of our, our uh, position in Eden, listening to this same devil. And now she is given protection so that she didn't have to listen to him. She was separated from him in a special place that God prepared, so she didn't have to listen to him. And verse 15, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water. Many, many evil spirits. When you, when you hear water in the scripture, it, it means multitude. So he cast after her a multitude of evil spirits. Just like a flood after that woman. That he might cause her to be carried away as in a flood. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up many of the evil spirits. Which, flood, which flooded the earth in pursuit of the woman. And this is what the dragon had cast out of his mouth. And those dragons were mad with the woman and went in to make war with the remnant. When he couldn't get his hands on her, he went in to make war with her offspring. So now he's going to make war with the remnant, those who missed the rapture. Remember that. We are talking here 
about those who missed the rapture but are now given another opportunity to make it. You know, the rapture happened in verse in chapter 7 of Revelation. We're on chapter um, 12 now. And so, here these people are. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water. I just read that. So now, she didn't have to listen to him anymore. She, she was got sent to her place, protected by God. Now, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his ten horns were ten crowns. And upon his head was the name blasphemy. So now Satan is not hiding his identity. See, he's been covert, doing things underhandedly, underminded ways. And now he's out, out in the open. I am blasphemy. What is blasphemy? Blasphemy is when a man rises himself up and calls himself God. Say he is better than God. He's bigger than God. And blasphemy is also when a human tells you that they have the power, that they have been given the power by God to forgive your sins. Now, who does that remind you of? Who on the earth that people go to and, and they uh, confess that I have sinned, and, and no, no matter what the sin is, the, they, are, they are forgiven it because this man thinks he has the power to forgive sin. So, Satan showed himself among the people. He plainly wore the name blasphemy. Oh my God. I can change the Bible, he says. He says that he can change the word of God. I, like God, have power to forgive sin. I was studying on this and I saw where in one instance he changed the Bible. Jesus, God Almighty said in the Bible that we should remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For in six days he labored and made everything. And on the seventh day he rested. But the beast has changed that. He changed it to say, you don't have to keep the Sabbath day anymore. You keep Sunday. And they have what they call blue laws that's alive in most municipalities. Which say you can't do this on Sunday. And you can't do this on Sunday. And you better not do this on Sunday. It's against the law to do this on Sunday. On Sunday. So that is blasphemy. His name printed across his head is blasphemy. And blasphemy, one of the signs of it is once when somebody tries to make themselves God or better than God. Or when they tell you that they can change what God has said in his holy scriptures. That's blasphemy. Verse 2. This is Revelation 13. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power. And he gave him his seat. The dragon gave him his authority. Nations have band together here. These are nations that have band together to achieve Satan's agenda. To destroy anything called of and anything called by God. The leopard is the Greek empire. The bear is the Medo-Persian empire. The lion is Babylon the Great. All these working together, powered by Satan, to bring on the earth Satan's agenda. Verse 3. And I saw one of the heads as if it had been wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, the Roman Catholic Church, way back in the day, I studied this in, in school as a child, set out to kill Christians. Kill Christians. They kill them, put them to death because they were not, they were listening to their Bibles and not listening to God. It is documented in our history books that they did this. Well, war came up and the Catholic priest was put in, in prison and he died there. That is the wound, the deadly wound, the war and him being in prison, he died, was the deadly wound. But because it was just one man that was put in jail, there were others who filled in that spot. They just came and filled in that spot and brought the Roman Catholic Church back to life again. A deadly wound that they survived. 
and there, this is verse 5, was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme the name of God and God's tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. You see, there are a lot of people in heaven now waiting for, for, for these who are going to be killed in the, in the name of the Lord to come with them before the uh, celebrations happen. One of my friends, Sister Naomi, say they can't crown him until I get there. <laughs> so now he has given power to speak. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay, these saints who had repented after the rapture are on earth and this beast is loose on earth and he is wreaking all kind of havoc with their lives. And he had power over them because they had to go through great tribulation. Blessed and holy are those that had part in the first resurrection. But those who didn't have part, the only way they can get in now is through great tribulation. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life. Anybody whose name was not written in the book of life was pressured severely to worship Satan. Only those whose names were written in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world were exempt from this torture process. Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Remember I told you that the Roman Catholic Church led Christians into captivity. They put them in jail, in prison for speaking the name of the Lord. And they killed people because they chose to be Christian. This scripture just says that the same thing is going to happen to them. And I just told you that it did. He that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the Pope was killed. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You just be patient. You just hold on to your faith. Because in the end, we win. <laughs> Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Now you got these beasts coming up, these little beasts. And they are encouraging people to worship the beast. You need to do it. You need to worship the, the beast. The one whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13. And he, go, he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven. On the earth in the sight of men. Well that's pretty easy to do in this 21st century. I mean atomic bombs. Nuclear uh, bombs and power. They, light, they can light up the heaven with so much fire. In just a few seconds. And, and in fact. Our, our very own president has a little red button that all he got to do is push that red button and the skies will be full of fire. Great wonders. Great wonders in the heavens and in the earth from the one whose deadly wound was healed. He deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of all the people on earth. How is he doing that? Television. When something happens, wherever it happens, all people all over the earth can see it and hear it in short order by looking at your television, by looking at your iPhone. It looks like great power and it strikes fear in your heart when you see leaders doing stuff like this. He was saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the one who was wielding all this power, which had the wound by a sword, and then recover. Let's talk about a system that is led by a man. 
verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, television, radio, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in, in, in their forehead. He put so much fear in people that they began to believe his lies. Even though the people who were not, whose names were written in the book of life could see that that is a lie and not the truth. But in their minds, in their hearts, they believed his lies because he was bombarding them with the lies through television, radio. They, they were sending out text messages and sending out pamphlets and stuff in the mail, getting stuff in the mail, uh, junk mail they call it every day. And it, some people can't take all of that and, and keep their minds straight. They believe everything they see. He deceived them. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. I was looking at uh, my Facebook page the other day and Dawn showed me a picture of Einstein. And they had taken Einstein and, and empowered him to sing a song. He looked like a sister to me. He could be singing it. But this is the kind of things that, that, that you need to be aware of. Giving that evil spirit power to appear as if he has life. Power to give life to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should speak. The image now should speak. Not the beast, but the image of it should speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It kind of like, uh, kind of like um, uh, the Wizard of Oz had this image projected among the people, and they were just bowing. Oh, they were just bowing like Almighty Oz, Almighty. And when they finally got to the end of the thing and saw who it was, it was a little bit of skinny man projecting his image across a big projector, making himself look massive. And dangerous. And now got everybody in Oz bowing to him. Well, that is the image. That, that's, that's what Satan's going to do. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. He got them to think in this thing. That no man might bow or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that's been happening in America for quite a while. I went to the store early this morning. I, I, was, I was at Walmart so early this morning that Walmart had not opened. And there was a line of probably 25 people waiting for them to open. I just sat in my car because, you know, I knew what I was going to get. It was going to take me a flash to get it and get out of there. But every item in that store, if you would take the, the uh, item and turn it over and scan it, it'll tell you what item it is by name, how much it weighs, when it was put in the can, when it's going to expire. It'll tell you everything just by the mark that's on the can. So Satan is, is, is already doing his little stuff. After a while, if you're not, don't have the mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to pick up that can and, and scan it. Only the people that receive the mark will have the power to do that. Those who don't have the mark won't be able to even scan. You can't buy or sell, the scripture says. Except you get that, that mark. Here is will, wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. A man who heads a system of government. A system of government that unlike Christ's system. When, 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 when God made the, the Ten Commandments. You remember he put them on two pillars of stone. On one pillar of stone, God talked about spiritual, spiritual stuff. Love the Lord your God with, with, with all your heart. Well, uh, on the other, the other six commandments on the other side, he talked about sin stuff. So a union of church and state. Well, these people right here are trying to eliminate the church and just let the person be guided by the man in charge, just the state. So there's a, a here's wisdom. Count the number of the man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Well, I'm actively working on that. 
And I've narrowed it down by the clues that were given in the book of Revelation and in the clues that were given in the book of Daniel and some of the clues that were given in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, I have narrowed it down to two. And now I got to research those two more. And when I have done, finished doing my research, I will be able to tell you, because this clearly says that the person who has wisdom and understanding can count the number of the beast because it is the number of a man. Let me tell you something else. When the Bible was written, they used Greek uh, and, uh, and um, Hebrew, and they used different languages. So in order to come to this, we got to, to, to make it true in every language. So I got to study the Italian language and, and figure this man's name, and it's got to still come out with 66. I got to study in the Greek, like in all of the languages, no matter which language you look at. When you analyze the number of his name, it's got to be 666 in any language. So keep a, a tune, keep in tune. I got it narrowed down to two. And the way I narrowed it down to that two was when I looked in, in the other prophets, because there's not, there's not very much brand new in Revelation. Revelation has a little bit of Daniel, a little bit of Ezekiel, a, li a little bit of, of, of Esther, all of the prophets. You have to go to them and get a little bit of information. That is why the scripture says that when you study your word, you're studying line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. When I lay, um, get it, shake them out until I get one, which one of those two is the Antichrist. I promise you, I'm going to let you know. I love you. That was Revelations 13. So next Friday we'll be on Revelations 14. I'm so excited to have put myself in line with God because God said that um, that we should keep his Sabbath. So I've been doing this at, at the, in the first hour of the Sabbath uh, for uh, quite a while now. And I'm really happy that God let that happen. Now as far as the church service is concerned, we're doing the Sabbath service. This is going to be considered the Sabbath service. The bishop still wants to do the Sunday night service because we want to praise and worship. And we're at liberty to do that. Sunday is the first day of the week. So on the first day of the week, we're going to praise God. On Monday, the second day of the week, we want to praise God. If we're not doing it, we're going to be looking at somebody else. So you ought to start it up your phone. We, we're looking at, at the people of God. We're, we're, we're filling our minds and our hearts with the word of God every day and every night. I'm watching your program and yours and yours. And I'm hearing and I'm learning. God is feeding me and he's feeding me through you. And I love you and I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Sabbath service. I'm enjoying saying that since, since now I, I see that one of the, the signs that God has put on his people is that our Sabbath service. He said, it shall be a sign unto you that I am your God. <laughs> God got to recognize you in his word. You need to measure yourself. Just like John took that read and he measured. He measured the people. God wants you to measure yourself to see where you stand in alignment. When you mess up, we got an advocate. Jesus Christ the righteous. All you got to do is run back to him. Be quick to say, I'm sorry. Be quick to say, forgive me. Be quick to repent. You know, David got into some of everything. But God said David was a man after his own heart because David knew how to get back in line with Christ. We need, we need to do that. You're human. We're going to mess up. The war is constant. It's always there. But we got to advocate. We can run to Jesus now and be ready when the rapture comes. Or we can go through the tribulation. My pastor, Bishop Isaac Jackson, used to say back in the day that if you, this, this is a scripture, if you can't keep up with the footman, how in the world do you think you're going to be able to keep up with the horseman? So this light tribulation that we're having right now, if you can't make up your mind to be saved and, and make Jesus your choice, and, and as you read the word and find out where he needs you to be, as you measure yourself, get yourself, now if you can't do that now with this, this light of affliction, when Satan has loosed his angels on you to, to kill you, 
to kill your children, to bring all kind of evil. How you going to keep up there? Well, I just read to you that there were some people who, who did through the tribulation, through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They regarded not their lives. They regarded it not. And they were saved. So get in, in line with the Lord. Salvation is the answer of a clear conscience. If your conscience is not clear toward God, if you cannot in, in your mind think that when I lay down to go to sleep tonight, if the Lord comes and get me, I am going back with him. You have to be dead sure. See, the devil, the accuser, accuser of the brother was, was done away with in chapter 13 of Revelation. But what he does is when you lay down, he starts bombarding your mind. You know you did this. You know you did that. Just know, that's his job. That's the accuser of the brother. But what you have to say to him is what Jesus said. Get behind me, Satan. I'm going to sleep tonight, and I'm not going to worry about it. And if the Lord comes tonight, I'm going to be resting in the bosom of Abraham. You have to be that sure. Because that is salvation. A clear conscience toward God. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, this when I work for the last couple of days, the swimming pool is ready. We'll take you down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll pray over you before and after. That when we bring you up out of that water, God will fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. He did it for me, and he is no respecter of person. You can come out of the water speaking in a language you have never spoke before. A language you've never heard before. Because he's that kind of God. So if you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, don't, don't, don't take it like what well, God understands. No, the stuff that he has mandated for you to do, you need to do. You trust Paul for everything. Paul ain't never been married, but, but whenever you want advice about your marriage, you go and ask him Paul. But Paul is the one that when he went down and saw those people who had not received the Holy Ghost, asked them, how were you baptized? And they said unto John, that to Paul, we were baptized in the name of Jesus, and they received the Holy Ghost. If it was that important for Paul to teach people that, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and said, men and brethren, this is what you got to do. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Philip, that was a unit who was traveling on a, a cart, and God called him up and pl planted him with the, the unit. And the unit, when, when, Peter, when Philip, Philip finished explaining, the unit said, See, here is water. What does hinder me from being baptized? If you got loved ones who aren't baptized, this, this, this is not the time to be uh, shamed or, or feeling like you're disrespecting them. Their soul is at stake. And their blood is going to be on your hands if you don't tell them the plan of salvation. You need to tell them. Your daddy, your mama probably say, when you, when you tell them the plan of salvation, they probably say, I wonder when you're going to tell me. You always preaching it to everybody else. Why ain't you? Why, why ain't you told me? I need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is transferred. All you got to do is go see your mom, lay your hands on her, and pray for her, and say, "Receive the Holy Ghost." And she, her belief, she if she believed it, she got it. You can do that. That is within your power to do. You want to be a complete person. And when you get to heaven, you don't want to look behind you and see all your mess coming up behind you. One man's sin is open before him and goes before him into heaven. And another, they follow after. You don't want your, your sins following after. So do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an overseer. Do the work of a bishop. Do the work of whatever your title is so that you can have a clear conscience Toy God when you lay down tonight. I love you. I can go on and on. I'm one of the people, man, before I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't say much of nothing. But now that I got the Holy Ghost, I can talk on and on and on. So I'm going to say I love you. Share. Send the hearts and the love, and I'm sending it back to you. <laughs> and we will see you on Sunday night with the Bishop Donnie Hudson. And we'll see you again on Wednesday night with my baby, Dawn India. As she expounds the Genesis, she's in Genesis now. Our goal is to take you through the Bible. You gonna if, if we keep up what we're doing and you stick with us, you're gonna have the testimony that in one year I read the Bible from front to back and from back to front. 
That means you would have read through it like two times. So pray for us in Jesus' name. We love you. Bye-bye.